Welcome to Shut Up and Say Something. I am your host and creator of the show, Deidre Daniel. This podcast is all about how to live a fascinating life, and we're learning how to do that one interesting conversation at a time. We try to stay away from discussing politics, religion, and the ad nauseum topic du jour, but anything else is a fair game. And today is episode number 30, which is a big deal because most podcasts do not make it to this number. In fact, according to a study by Amplify Media, 44% of podcasts make less than three episodes and then they're done. So reaching number 30 is a big deal. So thank you for listening and recommending this show to your friends and family. You're the only reason why I reached this goal. Without regular listeners, the show would not exist. If you downloaded this episode on Friday the 13th, you noticed it was late. And I will blame that on it being Friday the 13th. There's been a lot of weird stuff going on. Special note, even when uploading the show early and setting it to release at 11.11 a.m. Eastern, it takes a while to appear on different streaming platforms. So please ensure you're following or subscribing, whatever that platform calls it, so that you know when the show is available for you because the release times on all the different platforms vary. I spent yesterday turning all of the episodes in the catalog into audiograms, which I uploaded to a new YouTube page. I did this because I read that there's a growing number of people that are consuming podcasts on YouTube, so I wanted to test the waters and see if I could pick up a few new listeners there. For now, I have zero followers on that page, and it's a little sad and also kind of beautiful and pristine in its own way. Uh, The following five episodes will be solo shows. The reason is that I have a few projects cooking and my guests are overwhelmed with the beginning of the year activities. Do you feel a bit swamped? Well, join the club. Many people are scrambling to kick off their plans for this year and they still have not fully recovered from the holiday rush. And several people I know have come down with the flu, the new COVID uh, variant, which is now called the Kraken, or the other funk that is flying around. So remember to wash your hands more frequently and don't touch your face. My husband recently grew his beard out, which took probably five minutes to accomplish because he's Italian and has that robust follicle gene. And he is constantly stroking it, the the beard. And I remind him that every time he touched his face, everything that he's touched is now on his face. And then, of course, he wants to kiss me. Nope. Uh Uh-uh. So I will be filling the next five episodes with entertaining stories and educational content for you. And then we'll start with the new and engaging interviews for you to enjoy. And I have some interesting guests lined up and many more in the works. December 20th marks the anniversary of my nonprofit called The Big Fat Tip, and it became an official organization on that date. And this is when the paperwork made it an official entity, uh, but other stages in the process were still waiting around for approval. But I use that date to commemorate the transition of turning an idea I had into reality. And I recruit volunteers and we give out one tip for every year we have been an official organization. So last year we were celebrating our third year and I scheduled three drops around town. And this is more time consuming than it may sound because it is on December 20th and many people are tied up with holiday plans. They've left town for vacation or they're stuck at work covering for all the other people who are out of the office. So December 20th, 2021, I had run a few errands that morning and stopped by my home to drop off some groceries. And a cute little puppy runs up to me as I exit my car. I look around for the owner and no one can be found. And I pick him up and I place him in the fenced backyard. And he wasn't wearing a collar and he had muddy paws and legs. And I take a picture of him and shoot out an email to my neighborhood asking if anyone is missing a puppy or knows someone who is. And I post a picture on Facebook, the Nextdoor app, and one of those local missing pet forums. And as I wait for responses, I fill a bowl of water and he gulps it down. And I thought, well, maybe he's a little hungry. And so I put a little food in a bowl and he just completely devours that. He gobbles it down like he hasn't eaten in days. Meanwhile, my dog is pressing up against the window, watching all of this and losing his mind. 
and an avalanche of responses starts to flow in. A few of them are helpful, most of them are not. No one knows who owns the dog, and many people have conflicting opinions on what I should do with him. Take them to a local shelter. No, don't take them to the shelter. They cram them in cages and kill them after a few days. And all of it is said with lots of online emotion. And some people ask if they can have the dog, and I refuse because it's someone's pet and we want to try to find the owner. And the post is shared and reshared and bumped up to the top of all sorts of lost pet forums. And I call my husband, who immediately takes off work to help. And he takes the puppy to a local vet who scans him. And there's no identity microchip or tattoo. I guess some of them are doing these tattoos now. But he didn't have anything like that either. And we ask around at some animal uh, rescues. And no one's looking for a puppy like this one. Plus, they're full and they couldn't house them. So my husband takes the puppy to the SPCA, drops him off, and on the drive home, he is overcome with guilt, imagining the puppy scared and alone in a cage, and he immediately returns to get him. So then he contacts animal control, and he doesn't feel comfortable with the cages and the process there. Plus, we get a lot of horror stories from people regarding how the animals are handled, and whether or not those are true or not, he doesn't want to risk it. But he also wants to be legally compliant regarding holding someone else's lost property. So he leaves a photo of the puppy and our contact information if the puppy's true owner reaches out to any of the shelters or animal control. Then my husband gives the puppy a bath. He remarks that the puppy was better behaved than our dog as he's drying him off. And he said how he calmly rode along in the car and he seemed to actually enjoy taking a bath. And these are comments we'll never actually say about our current dog who seems to hate both. So I could tell my husband was starting to get attached to this puppy. And that's not good because we're not in a position to welcome another animal into our world. Meanwhile, my husband needed to return to work and I had to rush off to drop off these surprise tips. And I didn't want to leave the puppy unattended. So a woman who lived in a neighboring development saw one of my posts and offered to house the puppy temporarily for a night or two while we could locate the owner. And this was great because we needed a fast, safe, and temporary situation for the puppy. And that is how I became friends with Marissa. And for those of you wondering what happened to the puppy, some other friends jumped in to temporarily house and feed him while we waited to find the owner. We continued to post about it. We involved the police, got their input, made them aware of our collective desire to find the owner, and no one came forward. And after going above and beyond the legal waiting period, the puppy went to a loving family who absolutely adored him. And I've seen recent pictures, and he is living his best life. So fast forward a year, I reached out to Marissa and asked if she wanted to celebrate our first friendship anniversary by coming along with me to deliver the first surprise $1,000 tip of the day on December 20th. I had selected a few established Lakeland businesses and had drawn three of them out of a Red Nationals baseball hat and I assigned a number to each one. When she picked me up, I asked her to select a number from one to three, and she chose number three, which meant we were going to Reese Cliff. And Reese Cliff is a family diner that specializes in comfort food. They cook items like biscuits and gravy, hot roast, fried chicken, black eyed peas, and apple pie. And they have been around forever, and they have uh, black and white photos on their walls of customers pulling up to the restaurant on horseback. And when we walked in, one of the employees signals that we could sit anywhere we wished. And we selected a table that's over in the corner. And that is how we met our server, Stacy. When Marissa presented Stacy with the $1,000 tip, she was completely stunned. And she told us she was a recovering addict and mentioned her children. And then she started crying. And then I started crying. And it was pretty moving. And you can see the video on Facebook, YouTube, and our website. And if you retrace the steps, it was a lost puppy a year ago that led us to Stacy. A few days later, Fox News wanted to cover the story about how the big fat tip gave away $4,000 tips in one day to celebrate our fourth anniversary. And the only recipient who was available to be interviewed was Stacy. And despite her being nervous, she did an incredible job. She did a really bang up job. And get this, our local sheriff, Grady Judd, who's pretty much famous 
in his own right, he was familiar with her past and sent her a card congratulating her and encouraging her to keep up the great work. Isn't that awesome? And a note about Fox News. When they interviewed me, they cut my story off, which made it sound like I had made it. And I'm putting that in air quotes, made it. And I specifically asked them not to cut it off there, but someone in their editing department did it anyway. And I had told them about my story, about how I had waited tables over 25 years ago. I had made a promise to myself that one day when I made it, I would go around handing out big, fat tips. But fast forward to December 2018, I found myself suddenly unemployed for the first time in my adult life. And I realized at that moment that I had been wasting my life waiting for certain things to happen. I was waiting to be a multimillionaire to give away $1,000 tips. I was waiting until retirement to travel more and to write a book. I was waiting until XYZ happened before I could fully enjoy my life. And just like many of us are waiting for the right circumstances to be in place to be happy, or we're waiting for certain items to be checked off our list before we think we can do something else, life is short. Why wait? So the hurdle to giving away money was having the money to give away. And there are other ways to generate money. And I realized I had flawed thinking, assuming that I had to have that money myself. And that's why I started the Big Fat Tip nonprofit. I didn't want it to be a one-time Kickstarter or GoFundMe. I wanted to build something that would last. And four years and $41,000 in surprise tips later, I can confidently say that happened. Big fat thanks to the donors and volunteers who got us to this point. It seriously wouldn't have happened without you. And for the rest of you out there thinking that you can't do or have something until something else happens first, I challenge you to change your thinking. Don't let those preconceived notions hold you back from that interesting life that you want and deserve. Jump over that hurdle and make it happen. See you next Friday. Go forward, my friends. Be interesting.